In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the third Sunday of the blessed month of Peope. May God bestow upon us his grace and his blessing now and from the age of all ages. Amen. In um, the sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, we read Isaiah encountering the glory of God. And we also read that his encounter with God caused him, Isaiah, to see his own sinfulness at that same moment that he encountered the glory of God. And if I may read that passage with you, that's Isaiah chapter 6, the first seven verses. In that year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And each and one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds took, shook at the voice of him who called, And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim to me, having in his hand a burning coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. Glory be to God forevermore. When we approach the light of Christ, it is only in that event when we're able to truly see ourselves, and when we're able to truly see what lies hidden in the darkness of our heart. We read here, that when Isaiah encounters the glory of God, that at the same time, he also encounters himself. He sees himself as lost, as he says. He sees himself as a man of unclean lips, as he says, because his eyes have seen the Lord of hosts. In the Catholic epistle, which we read today, from James chapter 4, it says, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. That's from James chapter 4, which we read today. And so this tells us that the starting point, when we we reflect on this Catholic epistle, and when we reflect especially on that prophecy from Isaiah 6, our starting point to becoming cleansed or purified by God is not for us to see ourselves as double-minded sinners. For us to see ourselves in that way is not our starting point. But our starting point is to draw near to God to submit to God. And when we do this, we do in fact realize that our hands have done sinful work and and that our hearts and our minds are in need of purification. In other words, we we approach God first. And it is this experience that leads us to look at ourselves in a different way. In fact, St. James encourages us in a startling way, he encourages us to lament and mourn and weep. He encourages that our laughter be turned into gloom, be converted into gloom. Like I said, this is startling. At first, it's, it's, uh, it almost sounds to be the, the opposite of the, the gospel, of the Christian gospel, the message of the gospel. But 
to clarify, it can only be startling if our starting point is not encountering God in order to understand ourselves. It's startling if we suppose that in order for us to understand what sinfulness is, we have to start with ourselves, which is typically kind of a, a way that we conduct our lives all together. You know, we wake up in the morning, we look at ourselves in the mirror, and we, we um, in our mind, uh, determine how we're going to go about our day. Uh, but Christ shows us in the, in, throughout the gospel, which is the message of the whole Bible, which he fulfilled in himself, that he is the starting point, that it is in his life where all things which were previously hidden are revealed, especially who we are, especially what is hidden about ourselves, uh, especially what is uh, lying deep in dark mystery, hidden mystery in our hearts, the sinfulness of the state of our hearts, or the state of sinfulness in our heart. And so if we try to understand what sinfulness is apart from God, meaning without God being our starting point and encountering God and trying to understand him, who he is for me and what he has done for me and the knowledge that he shows me. If we start with ourselves apart from God, we would be led to a completely different God altogether. Because in such a case, it would be me who is defining for myself what sinfulness is. Of course, this is the reason why, you know, we don't stand, at least as the Orthodox Church, I, I, I believe, uh, you know, feels about this, is we don't stand on the, on the corner yelling out uh, that we're all sinners and we don't repent, we're, we're going uh, to eternal punishment. Because our starting point for each person is to approach God. It is not me who tells myself I am sinful apart from God revealing this to me. It is not me telling somebody else that they are sinful apart from God revealing such a truth to that person. Again, encountering God and ourself is a simultaneous act. Encountering ourself should not happen before encountering God. And so again, it is only in the light of Jesus Christ that we can understand ourselves that we can see ourselves as needy. And this neediness causes us, in the words of St. James in his epistle, our neediness causes us to lament and mourn and weep. Because now we know that we have been living our lives thinking that we are self-sufficient, that we don't need God, that in fact we just need ourselves. And this was Isaiah's experience in Isaiah chapter 6, which we read a few minutes ago. But it wasn't until he recognized his own need, which he discovered only while standing in the light of the glory of God. Meaning it is God who revealed to Isaiah his neediness. That Isaiah simultaneously experienced the cleansing and the purification and the forgiveness that he needed. But specifically, that in that moment he discovered that he needed. That when we see ourselves as sinful because we have chosen to step into and experience the light of Jesus Christ, our conclusion is not hopelessness, despair, depression, um, which is sometimes we misunderstand approaching repentance, that it should somehow end with hopelessness, despair, depression by itself, and maybe that'll be enough to encourage me to encounter God, to approach God. But it is in fact the other way around. And it has to be the other way around because when we do experience hopelessness in ourselves, because we've discovered that we don't have hope in ourselves, that we can't give hope to ourselves, that we can't give life to ourselves, give strength to ourselves, purification to ourselves, forgiveness to ourselves, because it starts with encountering God in the moment that we feel this hopelessness because of our lack of self-sufficiency, we simultaneously experience his hope that life is in himself, that he is the one who is sufficient and he is ready to give us these things.
As soon as we see our sinfulness in Christ, we immediately know our forgiveness in Christ. As soon as we see how much we need him, we have him. Our knowledge of both our sinfulness and our forgiveness, again, happens simultaneously. Uh, if you recall the gospel of, I believe it was last week, if I'm not mistaken, uh, about the conversion of St. Peter, Luke chapter 5, where he was toiling all night and caught nothing. And when he comes back, Christ is preaching his word to the people from the boat, an image of Christ fishing, catching the people with his word from the boat to the people who are outside of the boat, and bringing them into himself. And, and Peter being prepared with his brokenness of failing all night and coming back with nothing, coming back from the sea, the sea of this world, and hearing the word of God, Christ is now ready to take him out into the deep where St. Peter is able at this moment when he is most ready after being broken and being fed by his word, the word of Christ, the word of God, that he is now ready to experience the light of Christ. And when he experiences the light of Christ on that boat, what is his response? Does anybody remember? Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. And whenever we read this gospel, it's perplexing because what kind of a response is that to a great number of fish that is being caught, which he can now provide for himself and for his family? Um, success to his business, if you want to call it his business, his, his profession, his trade, his livelihood. But his response is, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And it is the same as what we see with Isaiah encountering God, that this is simply the response of encountering God is that now we see ourselves in the light of God. But at once, just as Isaiah received forgiveness and purification, that St. Peter in that moment was called to be like Christ, to be a fisher of men, retrieving others with the word of God. And so when Isaiah realizes his own need, it is only at this point, if we remember what we read from Isaiah, that the seraphim brings that fiery burning coal from the altar and places it in the mouth of Isaiah and says to Isaiah, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is forgiven. The same reason why, after telling us that our laughter should be turned into gloom and to humble ourselves before the Lord, St. James in his epistle today ends this exhortation by saying, <clears throat> and he will lift you up. Convert your, laugh, your, your, your gloom into mourning, lament and mourn, and God will lift you up. Today, my brothers and my sisters, we are standing in front of the same throne that Isaiah stood in front of, where we join the seraphim in crying out, Holy, 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 heaven and earth are full of your holy glory. Whenever we're in the liturgy, we are in that same encounter with God as Isaiah. And just as that coal that was placed on the mouth of Isaiah, so is the body of Christ in which exists the fire of the divinity of God that purifies all of our evil, that cleanses us from all of our evil, is placed on our mouth so that our guilt may be taken away and our sins are forgiven. May we see our own neediness as we approach the light and the glory of God, the light and the glory of God which are embodied by our Lord Jesus Christ, so that our bodies may become purified, so that our guilt may be taken away and our sins forgiven. And lastly, to quickly conclude on the gospel of today of the demon-possessed man, the man whose body was a house of demons, and he could not speak and he could not see. Just as the demon-possessed man in today's gospel who could not see or speak was presented to Christ in need of Christ's healing, May we also present ourselves to our Lord Jesus Christ today that he may heal us in the same way.
we who are in the same condition as that man, so that we may receive the light of Christ, because like this man, now we know we have been blind, that our mouths may taste and be filled with his word, because now we know that we have been mute, just like this man. And our bodies, which the demons are always trying to possess, because we know very well what it's like to live in this world, where that is happening all around us. Our bodies, which the demons are always trying to possess, may be made alive by the Spirit of God, that Christ's words today may also be true about us. If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. And glory be to God forever. Amen.